Hello, hello, hello. It's Peter Gregg, Miami, Florida. Welcome to the Christmas Room. Sit back, relax. You are about to watch a Peter Gregg video. Something warm, human, and wonderful happens when you watch Peter Gregg. So, this is my going back shirt. The A7R Mark III is going back. I'm sending it back. And I wore this shirt when I uh, sent the 5D Mark IV back, the Canon 5D Mark IV. And I wore this shirt when I sent back the Canon 80D. And here I am in it again. The only trouble is, it's like a tent. I lost 45 pounds. <laughs> it's like, I feel I could pull this all the way out here and put another person in here. So what am I doing today? Oh, we're sending the camera back. Let's get on target. Let's get in, in, in focus. Focus. Good word. Let's talk about focus. The last video I showed you how this lens failed and that lens failed and this lens failed and that lens failed. But you know, I was thinking about it and there's a way to expand on that. Right now, I have the Canon 50mm 1.8 lens set at 1.8 of course. We have white balanced with a better white balance. I put it up here like this. I target this in Final Cut Pro and instantly I've got a beautiful white balance. I'm going to do a video and show you how I do it one of these days as soon as somebody teaches me how to, uh, uh, how to record my screen on the Mac. All right, so this just feels weird. All right, so what I did is I put the 50 millimeter on the Sigma MC11 and uh, I put the Canon 50 millimeter, yeah, the 50 millimeter 1.8 STM lens on here. And I tapped on the screen and you know what that does? It locks the focus. So if I move back, I go out of focus. However, I have a usable lens. So if I actually have a Sigma lens, like that's on this Canon 80D, Sigma 24 millimeter art lens, 1.4, and you got that adapter, you can use your Canon lenses. And so if it doesn't work so good, turn it to manual focus, especially if you're going to be in a static situation like this, right? So this is the, the Canon 50 millimeter. And what else is new? You know, uh, I was talking to my friend on B&H and this is a little bit embarrassing because I didn't know. Maybe it's something new or maybe it's not something new, but I have a link to everything I'm going to talk about on one page on B&H and all you have to do is click that link and it's kind of like the wish list and I put everything on there so I don't have to say this is the lens I use, this is the camera I use, this is the microphone I used. You just click on the one link. So try it. Click on it. It's really fun because you can see all these things and an idea pops into your mind. You click another link. And of course, if you buy anything, they give me a finder's fee. So they give me a few pennies and I run right down to Chick-fil-A and I get me one of those. I don't eat that much there anymore because I've been losing weight so well. But anyway, check out that link. It's new. I find it cool and interesting, okay? Because I got all the Amazon links there too. But this new one from B&H and, and there's no tax unless you're in New Jersey and New York. It, it's really very good. So let's get back to the program here. He's out. He's sleeping. All right. So I've got the 50 millimeter 1.8. So you see what this is what the, what it looks like. Um, how about if I put the 50 millimeter 1.2? Doesn't that look gorgeous? Absolutely gorgeous. And that's in comparison with the 50 millimeter Zeiss 1.4. Gorgeous lenses. Just stunning. Look at the difference in the sizes. If I make it any more, I won't be able to see you between there. <laughs> okay. All right, so how about if we put this on there? It's not, I'm not going to make it manually, fo I mean automatic focus. It, it stinks. 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 But how about for standing still focus? Let's see if it works well. And you'll say, why doesn't it work well? Because at 1.2, it's like my ear won't be in focus. So if I just go like this, I want to see what happens. All right, so I'm going to stop this and then put this lens on and I'll be right back. Okay. Okay, we're back. This is such a light lens. It feels like a little toothpick. Dear Lord. This is the 50 millimeter STM 1.8 lens from who? Canon. 
And what's on there now? We're living dangerously because I've got the 50 millimeter 1.2 on there and I have it set to 1.2, but I have the autofocus off because I tapped on the LCD screen on the camera and it basically just locks it. You know what? We're going to have, oh, I can't even move around too much because at f1.2, I got to stand like right here. What happens if I do take a step back? Am I grossly out of focus now? I guess we'll all find out but this feels weird. We're going to have a party and everybody's got to wear a tent. <laughs> okay. All right. So this is the 50 millimeter 1.2. I'm not staying long on this one because I'm going to put the Zeiss lens back on there. The 50 millimeter 1.4 uh, lens. Uh, you guys that know about the Sony lenses, I really, really want to know, can I buy the 50 millimeter 1.8, the, the $200 lens, and will, will I be able to walk there and come back and walk and say hi to Jingles and come back? Will that work uh, like this one does? Uh, you know, it's not going to be the same quality, but if it's close for video, that's fine. But I mean, if it's really a stinky lens, somebody needs to tell me. And don't just give me an opinion. I need someone that's actually used it, that knows that, hey, it focuses pretty good. I don't think you'll have a problem. That's what I want to hear. All right, let's go put this lens on now. You're watching the 50 millimeter 1.2 Canon lens on the MC11 Sigma adapter, but no automatic focusing, just the adapter and the lens. So if you happen to have an expensive lens like this, you certainly can put it on an A7R Mark III because I'm doing it right now. Okay, I'll be right back. And through the magic of editing, I am now holding the 50 millimeter 1.2 Canon lens. And we got the Zeiss lens sitting on the tripod over there. Ah, uh, how wonderful. I didn't have to pre-focus. I've got the freedom to walk around. Watch, just, just watch. I can come over here and it does a good job. It's just such a good feeling. That's what I got out of the Canon uh, dual pixel focus system. I was able to walk around the room. I was able to go say hi to Jingles, who really, really wants a hello. All right. And I mean, he comes up and says hello to you guys all the time. So I think you can give me a second to come and say hi. Hi, how are you doing? Hmm? Yeah, we're recording a video with all our friends out there. What lens do we have on here? You don't really want to know what lens we have. Yeah, you don't really want to know what lens we have. <laughs> we have the Zeiss 50 millimeter FE lens 1.4 and I think we are set at 1.4 so we've got a very very shallow depth of field here too so this is the Canon lens both of the previous two lenses were sitting on this little guy the um, MC 11 from Sigma and it, it allows the uh, the lenses to sit on here Canon EF mount lens EF mount lenses to sit on here and some of them work very well like the Sigma art lenses well the Sigma's own lenses work really well okay so let's get rolling forward the camera's going back I feel sad that the camera's going back it's a very nice feeling it took me a while to get comfortable with the fact that I can just come stand here turn the camera on I can turn my face like this I can turn my face like that and boom we stay in focus it's gonna hit and miss here and there. They all do that. Uh, even the dual pixel focus from, from the Canon does that. I really feel like I want to put a cover on the back of this lens. <laughs> I don't like this lens being just sitting here wide open like that. I'd rather take the cover off of this one and put it on here. And that beautiful piece of glass is now protected. Okay, and I'll put it face down. All right, back to the story. So you want me to tell you all the good parts about the, uh, the Sony or you want me to tell you all the bad parts about the Sony? Okay, because it does have both. Uh, the good parts you already know. As a matter of fact, we know them so well that the new camera, the A7 Mark III that's coming out, has probably got one of the biggest order lists of any cameras that I can remember. Everybody wants it. Why? Because they put everything in it that needs to be in it except a few things here and there, uh, but nothing that's a deal breaker. Maybe for some people it could be a deal breaker. But I think that Canon has fired, a, I'm sorry, I think that Sony has fired a shot when Sony purchased Minolta cameras, 
Rem even remember the name Minolta? They were just getting into the digital cameras and they made their first DSLR digital camera. Uh, I owned it. I shot a couple of weddings with it. I got rid of it really quick <laughs> because the main problem with it was the flash system was terrible. How many of you guys think about the flash system? Uh, but now Sony has taken all of the Minolta base and foundation and built a kingdom. And they made the statement at the very beginning that they wanted to become number one, like they've done with the broadcast uh, uh, department and so many other departments where they come in. Eventually, Sony wiggles its way up. And now Canon is sitting in a weak position because they're not coming out with 4K. They're just starting to stumble in it. I don't know how quickly uh, they can respond. Nikon is working on it. Everybody is ferociously, feverishly working to get what the market is going towards with Sony selling. So the camera that's coming out, the A7 III, could easily, easily be a $25 or a $2,800 camera, uh, $2,495. But instead, they made it $2,000. And they put everything in it, the A9, which is the highest uh, flagship uh, camera that Sony has. They put the same focusing system in it. They put almost the same sensor in it. Not quite, but almost. It's got the same quirks at 30p uh, for the A9, the, the $4,500 camera. It shoots at a 1.2 crop. Uh, and a 24p, it gives you full frame. The A7 III that's coming out, 1.2 crop, the same thing. Uh, 24p, full frame. So it's like a mimic for instead of $4,500, you get 90% of that camera for $2,000. So they're shooting where it hurts. They're shooting where it hurts. They're hitting it right at a point when it looks like everyone else is paralyzed because so many people are moving to mirrorless and Canon doesn't have an ace up its sleeve. Nikon's working. Uh, uh, Panasonic didn't even realize that uh, that the video was going to be so darn important, uh, and, and they didn't put uh, you know a high end focusing system in there. It's okay, but it's not like this. So Sony comes out. You know the game of Battleship. Pew! They're looking to sink the Battleship, baby. Uh, C three, boom! Direct hit. <laughs> okay. So this is the marketing strategy that I think is going on. And uh, uh, Canon has sent their top end people to go out and say, yeah, we are now focusing on mirrorless cameras. We're gonna make a professional level one. We're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. Vote for me, I'll set you free. Oh, wait a minute, it's wrong. Okay, sorry, I got a little uh, excited there. But anyway, they're at a very weak moment. And that's what I think is going on. And that's what the, the A3, the A7 III is being released at an artificially low price to try, you know, on a racetrack when, when they're racing and they're coming around the bend and the one racer is looking for that opening because they're going like this and they're going like this and they're going like this, you know, and they're looking for the opening when the one car can just like, just go right around, okay? I think Sony found that opening and they took it. So let's see what happens in this race. You know what's going to tell the position of these companies? Uh, NAB that's coming up in the first couple of weeks in uh, uh, April. It's coming up. If Canon is able to pull a surprise out of its hat, then I really got to tip my hat to them. Okay. And they did. They said something in secret. If you go to DP Review and you read what uh, the article that uh, they did an uh, interview with the very high executives of, of Canon, uh, basically Canon said, we have the parts, we're just trying to get them together to put 4K. The question was something like, you put 4K in the M50 and then you, do, and then you took dual pixel focus out. What's up with that? That's not how they phrased it, okay? But it was similar. So this was Canon's reply. It was two parts. Uh, one part was the old arrogant Canon. You don't think we're going to give you everything that's in the 5D Mark IV for $799, do you? Do you? Do you? <laughs> that's basically what they said. I read the article. Uh, and then they said, we're not able to do it yet. So 
I don't know if they're kind of like uh, saving face or doing something. Uh, I just found it remarkable. But they did say something that DP Review just let it go whoosh right over their heads. They said that we have a camera, a mid-range camera. That's the key term if you go look at the article. Look for a mid-range, mid-level or mid-range cam camera eminent to come out. Okay. So if you see somebody that was uh, okay and then they're in the hospital and, and something terrible is going on and they say to you, it's eminent, it's eminent. It means it could be at any minute. Okay. So he said that we have a mid-level camera that's eminent to come out with 4K in it. And DP Review just let it go right over their heads. And Canon took that interview back around that we're working feverishly. We can't quite do it yet, blah, blah, blah. But I bet you it's a possibility. Possibility. Okay. What was that thing in, in uh, that club? Outstanding. Uh, you guys are, that were in it knows what I'm talking about. But anyway, uh, let's see what happens. Does Canon announce something in April? Right when the release of the S, uh, I mean the AS3 comes out. It's going to be a very interesting game, folks. We need a special announcer now because the race is on and they're heading for that finish line. And we have Canon ahead by a mile. They make more money than anyone else. But here comes Sony. Here comes Sony. They've thrown everything but the kitchen sink right into this race, folks. Are they going to be able to take that Canon horse over? It's going to be a finish by a nose. So let's watch this show and see what happens. All right. So what do I like about the, uh, the Sony and what don't I like about the Sony? Uh, what I don't like about the Sony is uh, basically the same thing that everybody else doesn't like. I'm not going to spend a lot of time with that. Uh, no articulating screen. What do they got? Their head in the sands? Everybody wants an articulating screen. And Max Yuri, you have... Uh, uh, did an interview with a, a high-end Sony person and he asked him what about the articulating screen and the and the guy from Sony said basically We we had no idea that you guys even wanted a, a, an articulating screen. No one ever said anything <laughs> What is this a stand-up comedy routine? Where have they been? The first thing everybody says no articulating screen. And then you get, of course, the wonderful guy that comes in and makes the comment. Make sure you're out there and comment down below. I don't need an articulating screen. Oh, bah humbug. I could say that. I'm in the Christmas room. Okay. Oh, bah humbug. Everybody wants an articulating screen. And if not everybody, 95.9%. Sounds like a radio station. I'm playing the same song. No articulating screen for you. <laughs> okay. I don't want to have a copyright infringement on myself. All right. So they made like, we didn't know anybody wanted an articulating screen. So that's the one thing. Okay. Uh, now the bigger things, the way the camera basically operates. All right. You're going to have to work with me because I'm not going to, I can't record it out of here to show it to you. But if you were looking at the LCD screen, Let's see, do I have a battery in this guy? Yes, I do, okay. So, I don't know how much you're gonna be able to see. I'll try and zoom in. If it's no good, then I didn't, you'll know why. All right, but I've got jingles sitting over here. All right, hey, go over there on your towel. Come over here, come here, come right over here. Now lay down on your towel. Very good, you're such a good boy. He wants to get close to me, so he comes all the way to the edge over here, and I want him down there because if people walk through the kitchen or something, it gets him excited and he can start. Anyway, all right, you see that? If I tap on jingles, there's a white box. Now, if I go left and right, the camera is now tracking. I don't know. Can you get that, Sony? The camera is tracking. See, as long as I stay in the bigger white box, it's tracking. Okay, Sony doesn't do that, okay? It does that automatically in face detection mode and you don't even get to pick the face. It works pretty well though, all right? There's nothing here that's gonna be a grand slam, so don't get excited, all right? Uh, however, if you were to tap the screen like I just did and if I was aiming at jingles, what it does is it locks the focus right there. No tracking, no nothing. You are locked. And then you can lock it again. Put your finger in a lot of different places. So that's very handy. 
So if you're following the birthday girl or the birthday boy or the bride or the groom or whoever it is with a Sony, you can lock on that. And as long as they don't move, it'll stay in focus. If you use the camera, it's, I mean the Canon, it's a complete reverse. You tap on the bride, you tap on the birthday boy, it's going to put a box around their face and then no matter where that guy goes or that girl, whoever it is, the Canon's going to follow it. It's basically tap and track, tap and track, tap and track. Okay, on the Sony, it's tap and lock, tap and lock, tap and lock. Nothing wrong with either one. I happen to like tap and track, okay, <laughs> because you tap on what you want and then you just got to keep them somewhere in the window and it's going to track them. Now, what you have with the Sony is you can go to one of the other zones uh, and you can call, uh, go to what they call a flex zone. Now, when you go to a, a flex zone, what happens is it's not tap and lock anymore. It's tap and track that spot. So it'll put a white box and then your job is to keep that person of interest inside of your little white box. However, if they move or you want to recompose, you have to move that white box over with your finger again. Where with the Canon, you tap on the person of interest and it will, as long as you can keep them on that screen, it's going to tap and track. So it's six of one, half a dozen of the other. Now, the half a dozen of the other, I don't like it as much as I like the six of one. I like to tap and track, but we don't have that on Sony. I don't know why they put it in a different mode, but the white box doesn't follow it around. Okay. Now this is video. So you guys that are going like, yeah, but yeah, but if I, uh, uh, put the, in, in the, in the shooting, you know, the stills mode, I could watch it go all over the place. Those little green boxes. It looks really cool. I have to tell you. Okay. But that's in the stills mode. It doesn't do that in the video mode. So for stills mode, You've got a, a freaking arcade in your hand where you, you're watching a game and you're able to shoot and hold it and you're looking at the green thing and it's like you're the, uh, you know, the bomber. You're the one that's coming in. Just keep it on your screen until we make that landing, boys. It's just awesome for stills. I mean, for a wedding, I can just imagine shooting a wedding with a Sony. It's like, oh my God, the bride's all over and I got her. I got her right there in my little green boxes. So it's absolutely amazing for stills. Now for video, it will show you uh, on automatic mode where it's going to go around the face, but somebody else comes in, it's going to go off on that face. <laughs> okay. So the answer to that is you switch it to the flexi zone and you tap it on the bride and you keep your white box on that bride or on that birthday person. So if we're singing to the birthday boy and you know, like he's 10, 15 years old, happy birthday, you keep that white box on his face. It'll stay in focus. Even if the kid moves forward to get a piece of cake or, or to kiss his mom or his dad, if you keep the white box, it's going to focus. So it does well, but you got to switch modes on the Canon. You tap on the birthday boy. Okay. And no matter what he does, no matter he goes and kisses or whatever it is that he does, you keep him on your LCD screen and it's going to tap and track. So that's the difference. You have to decide just like I did. I basically took uh, last night, to be honest with you, uh, and I said, okay, I'm going to pretend I'm in the wedding and I'm going to take, I forgot, I, I've got the Sony so I can move around. I'm going to take, and I came over here and uh, I tap and locked on something and I was going like this with the camera all around to see what it would take. And then I came over here and I took the camera uh, with me and then I tap and locked on, on jingles and I had him run up and down and I went back and forth. And as long as I kept him in that white box, I was winning. Okay. So that's the difference. That's how they different fundamentally. You're going to have, and, and Panasonic is the same as the Canon. It's tap and track. You tap on Uncle Bob, and as long as he, you keep him on the LCD screen, Uncle Bob's going to stay in focus. The Canon, tap and lock, baby, all the way. On the Sony, if you tap, it's going to tap and lock, okay? Or while you're filming, this is in video mode I'm talking, you can actually change the mode to the flex mode. Now when you tap, it's going to tap, and not lock, it's going to tap 
and continue focusing. It's not going to track. In other words, the, in other words, I'm where I'm from New York. Okay. In other words, the uh, uh, the white box is not going to move around. All right. But whatever's in that white box will stay in focus. So all your job becomes staying on the white box. Now, I don't know why I'm facing this way and this way. I'm pretending I have a subject over there. I don't. I'm here by myself, all right? So everybody else is in the kitchen. The other one's in the bedroom. So we do have uh, plenty of people, but there's no one in here except Jingle Bells. <laughs> I said his name really low. Okay. So that's one of the negatives. The other negative, I call it a negative because I like tap and track. Okay, <laughs> that's why I'm calling it a negative. Once you get used to it and you don't have five different camera bodies, like I might have five cameras in here at once and you have to learn each one, you'll get used to it. So it's nothing major. All right, so the next thing that is major, and this is a big deal because I really right now would love to have uh, the phone uh, and be able to pick up my smartphone, it's a Samsung, uh, and watch what's going on, make sure my head is not too tall uh, up on the top and I crop myself off. And if I did, this video is going up anyway. All right, so uh, that uh, face detection turns off. Boom, off. All it does at that point is track motion. And if I move this camera and the track motion locked on the camera, Okay, and I put the camera down and you can see the word Canon and I step away when it's without the face detection, that Canon camera is going to stay in focus. Even if I walk over here, okay, if I'm using the phone, it will no longer face track. So now I'm face tracking and while I'm face tracking, it's got a box on my face right around, uh, I mean on the LCD right around my box, right around my face. This is not a box, it's a face. So that's the face tracking, but it gets turned off way too easily. Face tracking gets turned off because, number one, if you use your Wi-Fi, turn the Wi-Fi on, your face tracking's off, so the phone is out. Put in a plug in the HDMI. Uh, you put a plug in the HDMI, you try to do that, your, tr your, your uh, face detection mode is off. So it just trips off. And I think there's a third one. And I can't remember what it is. Hello, 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 hello. Think, think, think. Well, there's a third one, okay? But it turns off the face detection. Um, and so I consider that a negative, a pretty big one. Uh, I'm trusting the camera now. I, can, I went over, I turned it on, and I'm talking. I don't know if this video turns out or not until I go to the computer and look at it. And so far, 10 out of 10 times, it's been spot on. It's missed, like if I go like this or like this. See, watch what happens if I go out of the frame. Now, you can hear me because I've got the lapel mic on, all right? But what you don't know is I'm over here and I'm picking my nose. No, I'm not picking my nose. I'm looking at Jingles, who's inch by inch creeping up. So now I come in here. It takes a second. I don't even think it takes a second. And it pulls my face into focus again because it's face detection tracking. So if you lose that with the Wi-Fi or the HDMI, you don't have that any longer. So you can see what's going on, but the camera's no longer doing face detection. All right. So that's a negative. And what was the other negative? This is going to sound silly, except I got burnt. I got bit in the butt. Okay. <laughs> the camera starts every time with a new file name back at zero or one even though I have it set to be continuous. So as soon as I reformat the card, I come back in, it's C0001. You get a little bit confused if you have a little bit too much tea to drink, okay? And you erase one of your files, it's gone, baby. It's gone, but they're all 0001. They start from scratch every time. They don't just keep going up the mountain like everybody else. What is up with that? Who thought that crap up? Give me a file number that continues, but it doesn't. And if you know how to make it continue after you format, I want the old numbers to continue. So if you know how to do that, get your fingers typing and tell me how, because what a pain. So the A7 uh, III is on order with me. 
this is going to get boxed up as soon as we finish now. I might do another video, but it's going to get boxed up. So I'm not tricking you if you see this camera in another video, all right? Uh, it's, it's got to leave tomorrow morning. It's got to be back at b and by Friday. So tomorrow is Wednesday? Yeah, tomorrow is Wednesday. So it's got to be on the truck. So that's about it. That's the best that I can think of. Let's move these expensive lenses around because somebody is wanting to come up here and we will accommodate him this time so he could say hello to you. But for the rest of you guys, this is it, the end. Uh, those are my negatives on uh, the cameras. I'm sure after I'm done, I'm gonna think about of a hundred other things I could have, should have, would have said, but that's it. Thanks for spending the time together with me. This is part camera time together, but it's part spending time together. We're like becoming friends. That's it, Peter Gregg, Miami, Florida. Catch you later. Whoosh. You have just watched another Peter Gregg video. Something warm, human, and wonderful happens when you watch Peter Gregg. Thank you for watching. Description of all equipment used in this video, plus any notes Peter took while filming, are always placed in the description box, show more box, or down arrow thingy next to the title on mobile apps. Duly noted. All right, come over here. Come over here. Yeah. You have been wanting to come up here all night long. Yes, you have. Let's give the camera a minute. What, do you got to smell everything on the table? Hmm? You, you want to tell me a story? Oh, what, do you want to give me your paw? You going to give me your paw? Over here. Give me the paw. Boom. Give me your paw. I know. I know. I like that. So this is Jingle Bells. You guys know Jingle Bells. We are, today is Tuesday night, so it's been a week and three days where he has not thrown up. It was beginning to look serious for you guys that are going like, oh, gross, what are you talking about? This was getting serious. I've been through three vets, four, one online, five, the one that helped me online. Uh, and we've changed his diet completely. He's eating a healthy cooked diet and uh, we haven't had a problem. Uh, he, I think he's gained some weight though. I'm going to put him down uh, because um, I fed him a little while ago and I'm not pushing my, I'm not pushing it by holding him and putting pressure on his stomach. So that's it. We finished another video. Goodbye, Sony A7R3. Bye. See you later. You guys that hang around and, and, and listen to me through this whole thing, thank you very much. I appreciate each and every one of you. My love to each and every one of you guys. Like I said, this channel is more about being friends rather than rattling off specs, but we all have a photography background together. All right, Peter, I already signed out, so all I have to do is say goodbye. Goodbye. Catch you later. Go, 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 go. Go home. Drive careful. Okay, if you took a few drinks, you just sleep it out. All right, <laughs> bye.